Okay, so here we are. Who are you? What a great title. We tend to make a lot of assumptions when we, uh, when we ask that, both of ourselves and of other people. And how we dress, how, what we're interested in doing, how we like to spend our time, they're all clues about who we are. But when we make those guesses about other people, we might not always be right. So gender identity is something that's being talked about more and more now. And thankfully, we have a new book to help this discussion along. Who are you? The Kids Guide to Gender Identity. Um, Many of you are probably familiar with the book. If you're not, you're in for a treat. Um, author Brooke Pesson Whitby works as an elementary school teacher, and I think it took a teacher to explain a complex issue like this in a way that kids can get it, but more importantly, so that adults understand and are able to talk to kids. With the beautiful illustrations by Naomi Bardoff, this book is completely kid-friendly and represents everyone. And I hope her publisher keeps up with the demand because literally every person who has opened this book in this store in the last week has bought it. That's it, it just, it's going to fly out the door. It's going to get a lot of attention. I'm so happy to see this happen. Please welcome Brooke Besson Lesby. paper and, and make it myself. And that's what I did. Here's the original version of the book um, with my little potato people. Thank goodness Naomi Bardoff came along. 
now the version that is out there in the world has some gorgeous illustrations. So anyway, do you want to come on up and just give us a little sneak peek before we start to read? It's about identity and who you are, and um, the things that make us who we are include what we like, what we feel, what we like to do, and since I illustrated this book, there's a lot of the things that I like in the pictures. I really like animals, especially dogs, so you'll notice a lot of dogs, and um, there's a stuffed giraffe, there's a cat, so... Um, so when Brooke's reading it, you can keep a lookout not only for all the animals that I added because I love the animals, but also for the things that you might like. We have questions about the pictures, so at the end, um, I'm sure Naomi would be happy to answer some questions. Um, so Who Are You is a book that is, it's a new kids book for what National Geographic is calling the gender revolution. and. I call it a transformation because it's really a reflection of how much things have, are changing in our schools, in our communities, in our homes, in our libraries, in our bookstores. Um, it's really a reflection of everything that is happening right now. And, and I think that transformation starts with a conversation and Who Are You gives kids and adults the language to start that conversation. So, this is, it has all of the parts of gender in it, right? It gives kids and grown-ups the language to talk about your body, your expression, your identity, and how all of those different elements fit together. And it gives some of the language to answer kids' questions. So when, when my students were asking me, you know, is that soccer player a boy or a girl, I really could have used this book at that moment. Um, lots of people, lots of kids now are asking, you know, what does transgender mean? And so, and, and there are adults who are comfortable talking about that, but they, they're not quite sure how to then explain that, that idea to a young kid. So there's, there's language in here that helps answer the questions. And it's also a way for, for people, for kids and, and grown-ups too, to be able to, to share their stories and think about themselves. So I'm going to read the book, and while I'm reading it, you can be thinking about yourself and the things that you like and how you feel um, and thinking about your story. So, I, need, I usually when I read with kids, I'm like sitting in the, the chair and the kids are kind of crawling up my legs. But I, so it's a little unusual to stand up and read a book, but can you all see if I hold it up like this? Yeah? Okay. Alright, so I'm going to read it. Who are you? Who are you? The Kid's Guide to Gender Identity. Who are you? Do you see any animals yet? Who are you? This is a long note for the grown ups. I'm not going to read this. <laughs> All right. This is a story about you. The important thing to remember is that you are the one who knows you best. If you see an animal that you like or anything that you like, will you give me a piece? When babies are born, people ask, is it a boy or a girl? Does anybody know any babies who were born? More animals. <laughs> when you were born, what did people say about you? Hmm, nothing. I bet before you were even born, people had that question, is it a boy or a girl? Babies can't talk. So, grown-ups make a guess by looking at their bodies. This is the sex assigned to you at birth, male or female. Sometimes people get this confused with gender, but gender is much more than the body that you were born with. As babies grow into kids, they start to know what they like and don't like. This is your personal expression, what you like, how you dress, and act. There are so many ways to express yourself. What you like can change as you grow up, or even from day to day. 
that ever happened to you? You liked something a long time ago, and then now you like something different? What's happened to you? What do you like? Don't like dogs anymore. Don't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> but that happens, right? We used to like some things, and then as we get bigger, I bet the grown-ups here don't like all the things they used to like. What do you like here? talk about how clothes are just clothes. Sometimes we, we hear people talk about how there's boy clothes and girl clothes or toys that are boy toys or girl toys. And this is a nice time to be able to make kind of make the point that toys are just toys, clothes are just clothes, hair is just hair. Um, and and to kind of bring up that idea that you can like, you know, there are lots of things that you can like here and it doesn't matter who you are. You can like everybody gets to like what they like. So kids know a lot about themselves. They know who they are by how they feel inside. This is your identity, who you feel like inside, who you know yourself to be. This can also change as you grow up or change from day to day. Your gender is just one part of your identity, what makes you, you. Some people say there are only two genders but there are really many genders. And this was the page that I really probably could have used that day on the, on the playground. I am girl, boy, both, neither, just me. And if you have words to describe yourself that aren't on the whiteboard here, there's blank ones, so you can fill it in. And this is kind of my favorite page. The, the, the message, um, kind of the central message of the book here is, you are who you say you are, because you know you best. And with older kids, this is a nice place to kind of stop and talk about how we don't make assumptions about other people, that you know, we, we want to be respectful of who people say they are and, and call people by the pronouns that they want to be called, the names they want to be called, and not, not say to somebody, oh, well, you're actually whatever. We want to be, be respectful. So that's um, a nice place in a in classroom that we would stop. So for some people, the grown-ups guess right about their body and their gender. This is called cisgender, when someone's identity matches the sex assigned at birth. And for some people, there are more than just two choices. There are, these are just a few words people use. Trans, gender queer, non-binary, gender fluid, Transgender, gender neutral, agender, neutral, bigender, third gender, two spirit, and there are even more words people are using to describe their experience. This is called the gender spectrum. Have you heard any of those words before? Yeah. <laughs> Classroom, this is a nice place to kind of ask that question and see what kids have heard before, if there are other words that aren't on this list, because really this list goes on and on and on, um, to kind of uh, get a little bit at what their experience has been. And we've had kids sharing really um, great stories about you know folks who are close to them in their lives who use some of these words. There are lots of ways to be a boy. There are lots of ways to be a girl. There are lots of ways to be a kid. Be who you are. So, this is the last page. But the best part of the book 
comes at the end here, the gender meal. There's a guide for grown-ups um, that gives some, some ideas about ways to start a discussion throughout the book. But when we get to the end here, um, what often happens is I think that idea that there are lots of ways to be in the world, there's lots of possibilities, can sometimes be a little abstract for kids. And so the gender wheel makes it much more concrete. It's kind of a fun to tool to be able to play around with the different parts of gender. So there's three wheels, and you can turn them and mix and match to create lots of different possibilities. So in the center here is the body wheel, and the next wheel is the identity wheel, and then we have the expression wheel. So it says, I have, I am, I like. That's kind of the simple, the simple sentence frame in the future talk. I have, I have, I am, I like. And on the body wheel, that some of the choices are, I have a body that made the grown-up guest boy. I have a body that made the grown-up guest girl. Or I have a body that made the grown-up say, we're not sure. And then on the identity wheel, there's lots of choices. Uh, there's, I am a girl. I am a boy. I am both. I am neither, I am not sure, I am trans, I'm transgender, I'm agender, and it goes on and on and on, and there's a blank line for any words that don't show up on the wheel that, that, that people might use to describe themselves. And then the expression wheel is what kids really like the most, the I like um, part, I like tutus, tank tops, vests, jackets, headbands, scarves, sandals, belts, lots of different um, things that you can wear. And then there's a whole bunch of activities too. There's sports, puzzles, <coughs> painting, running, swimming, cooking, making forts, doing experiments, dress up, reading, trains. And of course, there's a blank one there because there's so many more things that we like than fit on this wheel. Um, but what we like to do a lot of times is take other books, other storybooks, or characters that are sort of our favorite characters and put them on the wheel and say, so for example, um, I Am Jazz is a book that, that we like to read a lot at my school. And Jazz is a transgender girl who wrote her story. And she would say, if she were, she does say in the book, if she were going to use the gender wheel, she would say, I have a body that made the grown up guess that I was a boy but I am a girl, or she might say I am transgender, and I like uh, mermaids and swimming um, and soccer. And maybe so. Um, there's another really wonderful book that just came out, One of a Kind Like Me, it's a bilingual book about a boy who wears um, a big purple dress to the school parade, and, and Danny in that book might say, I have a body that made the grown-ups guess that I was a boy, and I am a boy, and I like big, beautiful purple dresses. Um, and then some some of you might know this very brave person named Maria Munir. They are a student in the UK, and they are non-binary. They, they came out to President Obama, I think it was last year, as, as a non-binary person. And so Maria, on this gender wheel, would say, I have a body that made the grown-ups guess that I was a girl, but I'm not a girl, and non-binary. And I like um, all of us, or President Obama. Um, that would go on So there's lots of ways to use it with other other books, other characters. Um, on the website for the book, kidsguidetogender.com, there's a whole lot of videos and songs and stories of other characters and, and real people who are telling their stories that can be kind of used along with this. And you kids can use it too. I don't know if you want to take a turn and try it out. When you do this in the classroom, um, often teachers have had to, to do, do it over several different days because the whole class wants to have a turn putting themselves on the gender wheel. Um, and it's, you know, it's great for us to use too because, you know, the way we feel and what we like and who we are changes over time. So it's a great tool to come back to again and again as we grow up. So, do any of the kids here? want to take a shot at it and try it? No? Jesse, do you want to do it? Okay. Brooke, you came up with the gender wheel. Yeah, I came up with the gender wheel. I designed the gender wheel um, because I wanted, the, I wanted that language to, to say, 
some people are like this and some people are like that. And, um, and really the sentence frames were kind of where I started. Some people have this kind of body and like these things and feel like this inside. And other people have this kind of body and like these kinds of things and feel like this inside. Just to kind of give, especially for kids who are uh, maybe just sort of figuring it out or kind of trying to find their own language, it, it's sometimes helpful to have it be about other people and not about you. Um, to be able to say, oh well, I'm kind of like that person or I'm not like that at all. Um, to kind of ground yourself in, in that. So yeah, so I came up with a language, Jesse, you want to say? A boy that wait no. I have. Oh. I have a body that made adults guess girl. I am a girl and I like these socks, shorts, nail polish, sunglasses, bracelets, and boots. Awesome. <laughs> things to like. Um, do you want to have a turn also? Okay. Will you tell us with your words? I have. Okay, and I am. Okay, and I like. Thank you. 